bless the Lord. I'd like you to open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's all stand, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, and I'll be starting in verse number 7. Second Corinthians starting in verse number verse number 12, starting in verse number 7. Chapter 12, starting in verse number 7. It says, And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Lord, we pray you might bless this word right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would cause me to disappear, Lord Jesus. Let your word go forth in power, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray you might anoint this word, anoint the ears of your people, Lord Jesus. Father, have your way. Bless us together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to say right off the bat, if you're not at Bible study on Wednesday night, you're missing out. Now, having said that, we had Bible study on Wednesday night, and there was a there was a word, one little word that was was spoken, one little word that was spoken that was sort of dropped in my ear, was really dropped in my heart, and I haven't been able to get away from that word since Wednesday. That word has been in me. And that word is struggle. Struggle. And we know the cliche, I think I mentioned it last week, and, and I mentioned it many weeks, that the struggle is what? Real. The struggle is real. But that word, that word has really been germinating in my heart. Struggle. And what causes now let me first preface all my remarks today by saying that for the most part, for the most part, and I will address everyone, but I am speaking about Christian folk. Christian folk, why do, why is there a struggle? If you're not serving God, it's really not a struggle. Because the struggle comes when the Christian is battling the forces of their flesh and wanting to do what is right. The one that is not a Christian does not have that struggle. They have only one king. They have only one master. And that's who they follow. There is no real struggle for those who are not serving God. So, for the Christian, why do Christian folk, young or old, young and old, struggle. Struggle. And when I say struggle, I mean struggle to live for God. Struggle in serving God. Struggle in being a Christian. Why does it happen? Why? What happens once you actually get saved? What happens once you actually become a Christian? I'm going to tell you the reason why Christians, whether you have been saved for uh, five years, 10 years, 20 years, five months, 10 months, I'm going to tell you why Christians struggle to be Christians. It's gonna sound, it's gonna sound like when you hear it, 
it's going to sound to you like I'm saying, oh, you know and we don't. That's how it's going to sound when I tell you why Christians struggle. Fight. Battle. And I'm in the same boat with everybody. The reason why Christians struggle to live right, to live with Jesus, is because they take the wrong approach in serving God. Translated, we don't know how to serve God properly. We think we know. I think I know how to serve God properly. What is the proper way to serve God? What's the How do you do it? You get saved. You start coming to church. You get saved. And you're told, now, live with Jesus. And you're off. And you, now you're a Christian. Be a Christian. Now you have Jesus inside of you. Be a Christian. Now you got the Holy Ghost working in you. Now be a Christian. How do you go about being a Christian? Because you've never been a Christian before. If you, how do you know how to do something when you've never done it before? How do you live the life of a Christian? the wrong approach. And what happens is, after a while, when the struggle begins, we start trying to fix it ourselves. We try to fix the problem. The problem is, many times, what happens, the problem is sin. Sin is the reason for the struggle, sin. Since you got up this morning, you have sinned multiple times. Already. You've been up for a few hours and you've already sinned several times. Some of you have sinned since you've been here in the building. You have sinned. So sin is the problem. Sin is the reason we struggle, but why the struggle? We take a wrong approach in dealing with sin in our life. The total wrong approach. We're struggling with sin. We want to serve God. I'm not talking about hypocrites. I'm not talking about fake people. I'm not talking about people that you think are Christian but they're really not. I'm talking about people who are really, honestly, trying to serve God. So there are people that really love the Lord and want to do what he wants them to do. That when they sin, it hurts them. It bothers them. They are convicted. That's what I'm talking about. We try to fix it by doing more. More stuff. More stuff. Had somebody tell me years ago, years ago, several years ago, I had somebody tell me that the reason why that they stayed so busy, so busy in ministry, church stuff, the reason why they stayed so busy was because they, the more busy they are, they keep sin away. And nothing could be further from the truth. The more you minister, it is not going to keep sin away. Sin is going to be there. You see, the problem is not to deal with the... You have to deal with sin at the root. At the root. You must know that you have what we call a sin nature. 
It is like a factory. It is like a machine. It is built inside of you. You are born with it. You will sin if nobody shows you. You have to be taught how to do right. No one teaches you how to do wrong. It comes naturally because you have a sin nature inside of you. It's always working except when you give your heart to Jesus. The Bible says that without the law, sin or the sin nature is dead. So when I got saved, what happened to my sin nature? It didn't disappear, but it So I unplugged. It's not working. I don't have to sin. I don't have to sin. But the sin nature, the Bible says, that when the commandment came, the law came, sin revived. Sin came back to life. The sin nature. The sin nature came back to life and I died. And the reason why the sin nature came back to life was because of Law doing stuff. It's the old example. If you've been with me long enough, you know my old example from Sunday school. The sign on the grass that say keep off. What do you do when you see that sign? You jump on that grass. Just because it says don't do it, you want to do it. A law. But something inside of you says break it. The more I try to do good things, and I think that those good things are going to make me right and righteous and holy, you will find sin will increase. I will not ask you to try it. But sin increases. And so it's not trying to stop doing that thing and that thing and that thing. It's disengaging. It is unplugging the sin nature that must be done. Dealing with sin at the root. The root. Yes, we have bad habits. Yes, we have bad things that we do. Yes, we are all wired differently and we all are going to do different things at different times. What tempts you will not tempt me. And vice versa. That's how we're all made. But we still have to deal with sin at the root. If you want to be used by God, and you feel that you can't be used by God because sin is in the way, I want to tell you this morning, today, that you can be used by God. You can be used by God. If your desire, if you're saved, and your desire is to serve God with all your heart, you can do it. What qualifies you to be used by God? What makes you able to be used by God? A willing heart A heart that says, I want you more than I want me. You have to say no to you. You have to put, it's basically desire and your own self-will has to step back. Because it's not about your dreams and your plans and your purposes. Christianity is not about you fulfilling your dreams. Christianity is about you fulfilling his purpose. You need his strength in order to be qualified. But we get caught up in this web of sin and we think we cannot be used by God because we're too bad, we're too messed up. We, we, I can't, I can't. God can use you 
right where you are if you want to be used by God. If you want to be. And at the same time, you still must deal with the sin issues in your life. Listen, the people that God used in the Bible, God used Moses. Moses was a murderer. A murderer. Gideon. The Old Testament talks about Gideon. He was a man who doubted God. God, if it's really you, then give me a sign. God gave him a sign. Well, now, if it's really you, then give me this sign. And he asked God for a sign. He, he didn't believe. Doubt. He didn't see the potential in himself, and God still used him. And over and over again, there are people in the Bible who looked unusable, unqualified, but God still used them. So you have to deal with weakness in your life. You have to deal with, as I said, you have to deal with weakness at the root. Deal with it at the root. The thing about yourself that you think is a defect, that you see as a deficiency, that you see as weakness, is the very thing that can catapult you to greatness in the Lord. Amen. That thing that you think, I, I'm too this, and I'm too this, and I can't because I'm too this. That thing that you think about you that can't be fixed and can't be done and can't be used, that is the thing that God can use. God can take your weakness and turn it into a strength. Yeah. Let me read you what it says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 10. I'm going to read it to you from a different uh, translation of the Bible. It says, Wherefore I am well pleased in infirmities, in damages, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ. For whenever I am infirm or whenever I am weak, I am powerful. When I am weak, I am powerful. You see, true strength comes when your weakness is covered by his grace. That's true strength. And only God can do that. Only God can work that out in your life. And I know you think you're inadequate. And I know you think you're unqualified. And I know you think you can. When I was young, I really didn't. I tried to serve God. I served God to the best of my ability. Hear what I just said. There's a problem with what I just said, but it's what we do. It's what I did, and it's what most people do. We serve God the best we can. The best we know how. And the Christian life is not about you trying to live the Christian life, because I tell you once, I tell you again, you cannot live the Christian life. You cannot do it. When he is in you, we must allow him to live this life through us. It's submitting to him and allowing him to live this life. The struggle comes when we try to make it happen ourselves. The struggle comes when we try to do more things to try to rectify the situation. We get in our own way and we mess it all up for ourselves. And we think we're helping and we're doing God's service and we think we're doing something great by doing more and more 
and more and more when you are really short-circuiting your own relationship with the Lord. Short-circuiting doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean you still don't love the Lord. Doesn't mean that God still can't use you. Doesn't mean you still can't get great things done for the Lord. But as far as sin goes, there will be struggle. Kenya said it earlier. She talked about division. What does the devil want to do? He wants to divide. He wants to disperse. Once he divides you, then he's going to separate you out from one another. And then he's going to destroy you. Divide, disperse, destroy. That's his method. That's what he does. Clicks, clicks. We're this group, and we're that group, and we're that group. And we're more holy, we're more righteous, we're more good. And everybody is in the same bucket. Everybody's messed up. No group is better than another group. No group is better than another group, because we got it right. We're doing the way it's supposed to be done. When you start thinking that way, there's a problem. Listen, when brothers and sisters in Christ cannot get along, when brothers and sisters in Christ cannot talk to one another, speak to one another, cannot address one another, in a civil tone, or don't want to be in the same room with one another, there is a problem. Problem. Nobody should say, excuse me, oh, I can't go over there because I don't talk to her. That should not happen. Not inside of the building. That should not happen. But it happens. And so we have to work on dealing with the sin nature at its root because that is the reason for the struggle. And we go about trying to fix it in the wrong way. Doing more. I'm going to get down on my knees. Instead of praying for 10 minutes, I'm going to pray for 20 minutes. Instead of getting up at 7 o'clock to read, I'm going to get up at 6 and pray first and then read. I'm going to lay before the Lord for X amount of days and that will make it all right. I'll be good when it's done. You will find, you will find that during that time of consecration, you will find the enemy will be just as strong as ever during that time and after that time, if not stronger. You must make sure that you deal with the problem at the root. The root. Because otherwise, we're just doing a patch up job. We're just, we're just putting a patch and we're not really helping uh, the situation at all. Let me read verse number 10. He says, therefore, or let me start in verse 9 again. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength. He says that his strength, when you're at that weak point, when you are struggling, and that word weak, it can mean weak in your body, weak in your mind, weak, feeble. 
morally weak. I keep giving in to temptation morally. He says, when I am weak, he says, his strength is made perfect. His strength, his strength becomes all it can be in me when I am less than I should be in him. His strength is completed. It's fulfilled. It reaches its maximum level when I am weak. And because of that, he says, I'm not going to worry about it when things happen. He says, I'm going to take pleasure. That word take pleasure, that doesn't mean get happy and start shouting when bad things go wrong. It doesn't mean that you start rejoicing when you're weak. It doesn't mean that you get glad when you fall into temptation. No, he says, take pleasure. That means I, I approve. He says, I'm going to approve of the, of the infirmities, the weakness, and, and the reproaches when people talk bad about me, talk about the necessities, the different distresses that go on in his life, talk about in persecution, he says, and the other distresses. The stresses there means total calamity. When the bottom falls out. I don't know if you're here today and the bottom has ever fallen out. Yes. And you can't see bottom. There's nothing there. Hmm. He says, when that happens, I improve. Because I know that his strength is coming. His strength is coming now. Because the bottom never fell out. I can't rely on myself. I'm too weak to think about relying on myself. There's nothing that I can do to fix this. There's nothing I personally can do to make myself strong. So I have to rely on his strength. I don't have the strength to be strong in myself. I have to rely on him. When I'm weak, when all of these things make me weak, pull life out of me, make me want to give up, when all these things happen, he says, then I am powerful. There's nothing like a Christian who knows that they are powerful. Knows that they are powerful. For most, being powerful is just a concept. We have power in Christ. Power, power. We talk about power, power. But when you know your power, you know it because you know your power become your power comes from Him, not you. You can't do it. And so as you are trying to serve God, you need to push the laws away. Because what the laws are doing, the laws, the different things that you think you need to do to keep yourself on track, to keep yourself straight, the, the different, they are let me use the word exacerbating the problem. They are increasing the problem. They are making the struggle greater. That's why you have to rely on him. So what do I do? If you're telling me that if I do that, and I do that, and I do that, and that, are you trying to tell me that it's wrong to do that? No. No. You need to pray as often as you need to pray. If you need to get up early in the morning to pray, you need to pray for two hours, you pray for two hours. If you need to read your Bible two or three times a day, if you have the time, The Lord tells you to pray. Pray. 
Nobody said don't do it. Nobody said don't do these things. But you don't put your trust in those things. You don't put your hope in those things. Because your hope is not in the doing of things. Your peace, your deliverance, your victory, your strength, your power is not in the doing of things. It's what you believe. I do not put my faith in stuff and things. I put my faith in Christ. That's where it belongs. That's where it needs to stay. Do you know today that you're powerful? Powerful. Rather, if he knows that you are focused on the cross, he will attack you. There is no such thing as sinless perfection. Everybody sins. Every day, everybody sins. Try to go a day without sin. Try it. Try it. It can't happen. It cannot happen. You go say one way or another. You must put your trust in Christ and in Christ alone. Alone. If you don't put your trust in Christ, these steps are going to get a little harder. These steps are going to get a little longer. These steps are going to get a little bit more difficult. Because as I said in the onset, you're going about serving God in the wrong way. What do you believe? Where is your faith? That's the key. Where's your faith? What do you believe? That is the question. What do you believe? It's not how much you do a thing. It's not how often you do a thing. It's what do you believe? That is what you need to know. So if you're here this morning, here today, and you're struggling, you're struggling. I can't do it. I can't do it. You put your faith in the one who has already done it. You cannot do it. You're right. Put your faith in Christ. He who caused it to happen. You gotta put your, your faith and your trust in him. By your hands, please. struggle is an often used word. You might even say it's one of those overused words. We use too much. Struggle. Are there other words to use? We fight, we battle, we wrestle, we're in combat. Struggle. Struggle face. If you really want to serve the Lord, I don't know if you really want to serve the Lord. I'm not talking about living in two worlds. I'm not talking about you trying to get the best out of both worlds. I'm not talking about you got one foot in the church or one in one outside the church. I'm not talking about you straddling the fence. I'm talking about your heart. You want to serve the Lord. That's all you want to do. All you want to do is serve the Lord. 
All that other stuff doesn't really interest me, but there's a pull. There's a struggle. And so I think I gotta, I think I gotta come more and I gotta, I gotta pray a little harder and I gotta, there's nothing wrong with doing those things. But your deliverance, the victory comes when you put your faith in the only one So if you're here on this Sunday and you are struggling, struggling to be a Christian, listen, being a Christian, being a Christian is one of the most unnatural things that you can do. Unnatural. Our nature. We are going against our sinful nature to do something that your, your, your body, your inside of you, your spirit says, no, this is not what I want. If you're struggling here today, whether you're young or whether you're old, and you are struggling first thing to do is don't deny the struggle. Don't say that's not me. Don't say I'm good. I'm fine. I'll be alright. No, you won't. You actually won't be alright. If you're struggling and you're going about, going about dealing with the struggle in your life in the wrong way, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And you will find yourself doing things that you never thought you would do. Things that you never did before you were a Christian and you find yourself doing it. You're here today.
know, on social media the other day of a woman in the car with a child, presumably her child. And the child was cursing, cursing. And the mother, who I assume was the mother, was sitting there and she was getting a kick out of it. She was laughing. And she was laughing while the little boy had to be three years old. Just cursing away. And every time he let out a curse, the woman started laughing.
Lord. And at the same time, I know that Satan has his grip. The enemy has his grip on lives. And there are chains that need to be broken. Chains. Some of them you feel. Some of you, some of them you experience. And some of those chains, you don't realize that they're chained because they're not yet fully connected. The enemy is linking them. He's linking them. And you don't know yet that you're in bondage. You don't know that yet. It's never too late to come out of bondage. But you don't need to go in with your eyes wide open. So the Lord's presence is here. And while his presence is here, that's when you need to deal the issues of your life. That's when you need to deal with the issues of your life. You don't know when you will have a chance to deal with them again. Amen.